תודה רבה, זאב. I would question the, uh, your, uh, uh, what you defined as a lovely topic, um, uh, since we're going to speak about uh, how to define a moment of death. Um, but uh, I guess we could find some positive aspect in, there, in that. I would first start with saying hello for, for some of, of, of the friends that I see here, and I probably don't see everybody because there are so many here on the, on the, uh, on the screen. I see me, I see how I see many others. It's great to see you. It's great to see you all. Especially, especially the giraffe who's now who's who is, uh, who is Stephen, but it's nice to see you as well. Um, so why did I pick this uh, topic? A couple of days ago, um, and let me say uh, a few words before. Um, so I was doing many things, and one of the few things that people are not really aware and, and uh, because it's a quite quite a small project uh, involved with uh, this. Uh, In this cell phone, actually, I have um, two um, SIM cards, okay? And my other SIM card of, of my professional business uh, is, has to do with picking up the phone, answering uh, to families who, cons who want to consider uh, organ donations. Very rare situation, okay? Out of 140,000 cases of death uh, every year, only 150 cases end up with a situation where we can even consider organ donation in Israel. That's the, these are the numbers. And uh, in many cases, they want to consult with the Rav, with the Rabbi, to be able to provide them with the halachi guidance of how to do that and, and what should we look into that. Let me brief you. Just a couple of days ago, I received a phone call from uh, one of the Rabbanim of Tohar, who lives in Giba Time, and he had a very simple question. He said, I know you are involved with uh, uh, organ donation. One of my uh, Tehillah members, it's a very sad story, as a result of the corona situation, uh, took his life, and um, apparently he wasn't so successful in that, and he got into the situation that he was capable uh, that his family had to decide whether to uh, donate his organs or yes or not. That's a very sad circle, uh, a, a verification of, of the corona. It got into a into very uh, 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 terrible situation. But when I get this kind of conversations, I've always been asked about what is the halachic guideline for uh, organ donation. And, 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 and in general, how do we define the moment of death and uh, we'll look into that. I hope we'll be able to uh, bring some hope in the, uh, in, in the end, because uh, in the end, the, the, the goal of, of handling and, and dealing with this situation is to be able to save lives, and that's really uh, makes, makes us more, it's a, it, that's the pleasant uh, uh, part of the situation. So let's dive into the uh, into the halachic uh, discussion. Uh, feel free to open the microphone and, and ask whatever questions that you uh, feel like. I actually not a big fan of the Zoom uh, uh, classes, but this is the reality, and let's move on with this. Okay. We all. I hope you see the screen. Let's start with the uh, with the, where everything starts in in, in alacha. We start in the um, in the uh, value that we uh, cherish towards life. Uh, apparently, and that's clear, and everybody knows that the term it defines the uh, importance and the uh, centrality of life in the, in Yadut is the, is the following verse. In Vaikra, Ushmartem et Hopotai, Vet Mishpatai, Shaya Seotam Adam, Vachai Bahem and Yashem, not only keeping the mitzvot, but the purpose of Q mitzvot is Vachai Bahem. And we all know that the, these two, the term of Vachai Bahem, these two words, define many questions in Alacha. For example, um, the Mishnah in Masechat Yoma says that. 
as a result of the chai bahem, that the purpose of Kiyum is to the end, to bring us life, is that when it comes to contradiction or a conflict between perform, performing a mitzvot like mitzvah Shabbat, which is one of the key mitzvot in, in the Torah, when it's in a conflict with uh, keeping one's life, the, if not even with um, vadai, with, the, with a certain level of, uh, of, uh, of pikuach nefesh, but also you, you, even in the, in the case of sapek, of a doubt situation, we, where we're not sure we'll be able to save lives. Even for that, it's been dochet a Shabbat, means it pushes away the, uh, or the mitzvah of Shabbat. And uh, we are obligated to what, do take whatever action necessary in order to save lives, even if we're not certain that it will actually save lives. And the Mishnah gives an example. Mishnafla alav napolet, someone who uh, was uh, stoned, basically, uh, and he's now uh, covered with, uh, with uh, I don't know, it could be uh, rocks and stones. And we are not sure whether he's, uh, he, he, may, he is alive or not. Safek usham, safek enosham. Not only if we are, we are that, that not, even if we're not that full. Uh, um, even if we doubt if he's, oh, he's there, in other words, we don't know if someone is, is under the, uh, the, uh, those rocks and, uh, or not, or even if we know that someone is there, but we're not sure whether he's alive or not, we're not, and even if we have a third safek, that it, safek nuchri, safek Israel, um, in all these three cases, I mean, even if we have three doubts in a row, in other words, not only we're not sure there's someone there, not only we're not sure whether he's alive or dead, not only we're not sure whether it's Israel or Nochri, we, the, the halacha rules, mefakhim alav et hazal. We should remove the stones in order to check metza'u chai. If we, we remove the stones and we find the person, and, uh, and he's alive, obviously, mefakhin means, meaning we keep removing and, and doing that. Uh, we need to bear in mind that the moving stones in Shabbat may involve several issues in halacha. Uh, it could be uh, tiltul, it could be muktz, it could, could be several uh, things, but we remove, we don't consider Shabbat rules at this uh, situation as we want to save lives. And that's the, the sentence we need to focus on, the very last sentence. We remove the stones, but once we find a body and we find someone dead, we do not continue. Obviously, there is more to do with uh, uh, burying the body, but this can, we can wait for after Shabbat. After Shabbat, we'll come back to the place and obviously uh, uh, rescue the, the body and bring it uh, to the grave. Now, the term, the, the, the definition of the imits met needs to be well defined. So the Gemara is asking, is dead or alive? In, 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 in the Masechet Yoma says, we should, uh, in other words, when we have someone who's covered, we can, you know, we start, can start from where we find, let's say we, we remove the stones, and we, uh, and we found the, uh, the, his legs, okay? Or we found his head, the person's head. Should we check on him whether he's alive or not? Or should we keep moving because we don't have the the, uh, the what would testify? What would give us the evidence? What would give us the evidence that the person is dead or still there's chance that he's alive? So there's a dispute. First opinion says ad chotmo. Only when you get to his nose. And yeshomrim ad libo. In other words, you should keep uh, digging and removing the stones until you, you uncover his heart and you check the heart, you don't check the nose. 
obviously these two op uh, opinions is easy to understand that, th that they actually uh, uh, argue what defines life. Is it when one breathes and that's the breathing and the way to check that is the nose, right? That's the organ where we can, we could check breathing the, in the best way. We can listen and, and maybe feel uh, a breath. And one would say, no, we should, what uh, makes us alive is whether the, our heart beats. So therefore we should uncover the stones until we reach the, the, the heart. And until we get there, we cannot define that the person is dead and we should no longer continue with the, our efforts to save it. Amar of Papa, says of Papa, however, though we do have two opinions, we seem to be equal, right? One says it's breathing. One says it's heart beating. Says of Papa, machloket mimata lemala. The dispute is only when you cover the person from his legs, which considered down, okay? From down, down the body, all the way up to the head. Aval mimaala lemata, but in case you uncover the person and you reached his head and uh, you are on the top, which is the head, mimaala, and you uncover towards lemata, towards the, down, down the body, keivan de badakle ad hotmo, since uh, at the moment th that you uncovered his nose and you checked and you, there is no sign of life and no breathing, which means that if I'll give the, the, the two situations, situation number one, and on that says Rav Papa, that this is what the dispute is all about, is that when you find a body or someone under the, the rocks, you should uncover it. If, in, in, since you started from the legs, when you uncover, you reach the heart first. And that says that if the heart is, is not working anymore, the assumption is that, the, uh, that there's no breathing as well. And by the way, it's been supported. Um, you won't find someone who's uh, still breathing when the heart stopped beating. But says the, the one who dis disagrees says, well, maybe there is some chance, keep, keep uh, uh, dig until you get to the nose. What they do not dis uh, disagree on, that's the second situation, where you uncover from the head and therefore, uh, and you, you were able to check his nose, to check the breathing, and then it's a definite death and you don't need to proceed on Shabbat in the efforts to save you, to save life. What comes up from this Gemara very clearly, okay, that breathing is the, uh, the uh, hook or the, the best definition when you check the breathing to define one's uh, death or maybe perhaps the person is still alive. With the heart would, uh, would, be, would add to that and will unnecessary the, uh, the, the, to further check on, on the breathing, that's a dispute, but no doubt that someone who lost and stopped breathing is a dead person. Questions so far before we move? Hello? Okay. Uh, can Mashila? I asked if, if we have questions until this point, where we brought the Gemara. Okay, I'll... Ah, כל אחד יכול לפתוח מיקרופון ולענות. תודה. Okay, so so far it's very simple. It seems to be very simple, okay? Um, the uh, the uh, dispute in the Gemara that it does not present a radical dispute, rather uh, whether heart beating can uh, be an evidence for loss of breathing regardless checking the nose itself. Um, and the answer of the Gemara, at least according to the Papa, is that, no, we should, uh, we should uh, uh, it is possible that this is the case, but at least breathing is something that agreed on all opinions, 
that when we know that someone cannot breathe anymore, he's dead. Now, the ramification of this question is uh, uh, across many, many, many issues in halacha. Even before we could even consider organ donations, um, let, that's a, a, a very good example. The Chatan Soifer, uh, in, the 18, in the 19th century, the beginning of the 19th century, was asked about uh, a Kohen, a doctor who is a Kohen. Um, I guess we have some, someone here on the crowd who is also a doctor and a Kohen. Mitch, are you a Kohen? I don't know. Um, so uh, when we have a doctor uh, who is a Kohen, that the government in this country um, required that prior to sending a body for burial, a doctor has to check the, uh, the body. And the question came up, a Kohen, if he's not allowed to be mitame to, uh, to, uh, to a body, and can he um, do this procedure to approve the burial? And he, Chatan uh, Sofer received the question, Yikrato higi'ani v'nafsho ha'ikara b'yishelato, nidon ir echad, about one city, sh'harofe kohen, that the, the doctor is a kohen, u'mini musay ha'medina, and one of the rules of the country, שאין אמיתים נקברים עד אחר שבדקו הרופא, וחפץ מעלתו להתיר משום ספק נפשות. He said, maybe we should, we, we, we are able to be matir uh, for this doctor to perform this procedure, as we are not definite, uh, and if, a, if a doctor will not check the person, maybe there is a chance the person is still alive, and, uh, and uh, as a result of Pikoach Nefesh that rejects all halachot in, in the Torah, just like we saw on Shabbat, it will also reject the halacha of, Rofe, not, uh, of a Kohen not to be meta. And Chatan uh, Sofer doesn't like this answer. He wants to, uh, he, he doesn't want to allow this Kohen, this doctor, to perform this uh, procedure. And he is bringing up our uh, sugya. And he says the following, V'nech uh, ze'anan, B'li safek, Kesh'amra ha-Torah, Ki ye be'ish chet mishpat mavet Ve'humat lo tali nivlato ala etz Ki kavor tikverenu. And he quotes the verse in the Torah that involves with not postponing burials. And uh, it's been learned from, uh, from uh, uh, someone who's, who bad him, executed him for whatever reason. And uh, even though we are committed to bury his uh, um, body uh, in, uh, in, in the first uh, manner, and therefore we will not postpone that any uh, 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 what, what, after the death. So the question comes up is at what point uh, the rule of not postponing the dead from burial starts, not what it has to start when death is being defined. In other words, it's a strict prohibition and a strict mitzvah, both ase and lot ase, to perform that. He says, in order to be able to implement this halacha, probably we were received the uh, measurement and the, the, the uh, instructions and the definition of what, when it's considered to be dead. And Ulai haya as masoret, maybe there was tradition, nibaleti bi'im rishonim from the past. Aval pishen nishkach mirof ez manen v'alem sakhu chazal. He said, though we are not sure exactly what, what did the Torah refer to, but probably they had tradition on this. על כורכך קיבל משה רבנו, עליו השלום השיעור מהלכה ומשם סיני, או שסרחו עצמן אקראי, כל אשר רוח חיים בעקרו, זה הכל תלוי בנשימת העם. But everything is up to breathing. And obviously the way to check that is through the nose. Today we have better ways to do, to check that, but at least when we need to, to have parental test, the nose is one, one of the options. וכמבואר ביום הפה, ופסקו רמב״ם ושמור שולחן ערוך. 
ועל כן, קונקלוד שצריך אתה וסופר, כלל הוא לכל המתים שזהו שיעור המקובל בידינו מאז שהייתה עדת השם לגוי גדול, קדוש לכל הרוחות שבעולם, אם ימלאו חופניהם רוח לא יזיזינו ממקום תורתנו הקדושה, אבל כל שאחר שמוטל כעבד דומם, אם אחר כך בטל הנשינה, אין לנו אלא דברי תורתנו הקדושה שהוא מת. ולא ילינו אותו, והמטמא לו, אם הוא כהן, לוקה אחר ההתראה, therefore, he does not allow the doctor, the כהן, to uh, make this test. He says it's clear that uh, you check the breathing, and once uh, per, the, the person is not, does not breathe, uh, he's considered dead, and the כהן is not allowed to be מטמא to a dead person. So that's uh, one sample, one example for ramification that comes out of the uh, definition of what defines the moment of death. If we skip 200 years later, furthermore, even some, some 300 years later, and we get to uh, the final uh, discussion about, about uh, our organ uh, donation, I need to advance something. We need to understand that the whole history of organ donation started in the 50s, 60s, Uh, of the previous uh, century, where the situation where you can uh, still keep the body functioning, even though the is uh, 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 not is not breathing, and I'll be even more precise than this. We need to know that when we talk about about uh, uh, breathing, we talk not only on 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 the uh, when the uh, when the uh, when you, don't, you can't actually breathe, it's when it only happens when your brain dies, because it's a reflex. In other words, the, a person does not decide or uh, choose, or it's not even a, um, it's not even a, 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 a like the heart, that it's, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, physical muscle that uh, actually functions. The breathing is a reflex, okay? Breathing is a reflex. In other words, in, in the, the, like all other reflex, reflexes, it's all come, come up from the brain. In other words, um, it will, if the brain would die, totally, the total death, and I'll explain that in a second furthermore, uh, the person will not have this reflex of uh, breathing. And to be even more precise, we're not talking about general brain uh, issues, We are talking about the uh, when hold on. We're talking about the brainstorm uh, to die because the the part that's in charge of breathing and giving the command the the, uh, the order to uh, to the lounges to uh, to actually breathe is the brainstorm, and we need to find out in, in, once that happens, okay, then breathing stops. So when we talk about Uh, death, uh, uh, stop breathing, we actually uh, talk about uh, not just the death of the brain, but uh, respiratory brain death. It's a combination because the, it's the brain that controls the breathing. So when the science got, got to the point that even when one loses uh, uh, any function in the, in the brain, still they, there are machines to keep The, the body functioning. In other words, the heart would start beating on its own, but uh, we can have oxygen into the uh, lounges and we, uh, uh, we can let the, basically the body keep, get the uh, oxygen necessary in order for it to be maintained. The opening for uh, organ donation uh, has started. And uh, there were several attempts and in the beginning the, the, the uh, successes of this kinds of surgery was quite low, but went up and up to the point that people can keep live for very good years, five, six, 10, 10, 15, even 20 years. Uh, we even got to the point that we can uh, get uh, donations from, uh, from, from live people when it comes to kidneys or in some other uh, options. So the, the option is there and, uh, and um, it's a great achievement. So when the discussion came up to halacha, uh, and I bring here just Rav Shaul Israeli, Rav Shaul Israeli says, like, and I'll uh, uh, surely uh, uh, share with you who, uh, who else is saying that, 
that trans uh, is that uh, organ uh, uh, that uh, organ donation from a person whose brain death was sick is 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 uh, is, hal is halachic is mutar according to halacha not just mutar maybe maybe even a mitzvah so let's let's go it step by step says Rav Shalom Israeli and I share with you on the screen umikan כשהבדיקה הייתה מלמעלה למטה, לכל הדעות צג בבדיקת הנשימה, שאז אין ספק חי. In other words, he says, quotes of Papa in the Gemara that we saw, that no doubt that breathing, the check for breathing, is the, is the check that uh, uh, defines with someone dead or, or alive. והרי אין ספק, he said, שהיה ידוע להם לחז"ל, there's no doubt that חז"ל knew, שגם כשפסגה הנשימה עדיין ייתכן שהלב דופק. He said, there is no doubt that our sages knew that even after breathing is over, the heart can still beat. Okay? How, how, how did they know that? First of all, he says, שהרי כל ניתוחי השתלת הלב הם בחי גם כשהנשימה נפסקה. He says, וזהו דבר מורגש ומוחש, מבלי להשתמש במכשירים משוכללים שפותחו בזמן האחרון. אלא היה אפשר להיווכח מזה, להיווכח מזה גם בזמן הגמרא, מהרוגי מלכות וממי שהותז ראשו. That's a very important sentence. It says, um, in the days of the Romans, or even later, הרוגי מלכות, uh, they would take off their head, behead them. And when you behead someone, you can see that the person is not breathing anymore, yet the heart still beats. Um, not for a long time. It will take min between minutes to uh, I mean, a couple of minutes. It could be a couple, few minutes or a couple of tenth minutes. But the, uh, the, uh, the heart in the end will stop functioning as well. But it will take it some time. And therefore, and there no doubt, okay, that someone who was beheaded uh, is dead, even though that the heart still beats. Therefore, and when, therefore, when, when our sages determine that breathing is, is what counts, the moment that the person uh, it, it does stop breathing, even though the, the heart still beats, no doubt says Rav Shaul Israeli that they were aware of the situation, and yet they find that breathing is the case, and therefore, uh, in, even in our case, what we need to consider is not whether the, the not the heart versus breathing and brain death. If not, why did they not think about it? And why did they say to the blood on Shabbat? And they said to the blood on Shabbat, why did they say to the blood on Shabbat? And that's important line. Even if the blood is in the blood, 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 even if the blood is in the blood. Okay? Okay, so what did we see so far? We saw the, the Mishnah, we saw the Gemara, we saw the Mishnah that says that, that, that for Pikuach Nefesh, even if not a definite Pikuach Nefesh, a, situa a risk situation, even just if we have slight chances to rescue one's life, we uh, remove all mitzvot, including Shabbat, and take whatever action necessary to save the person. In order to define uh, at what point we stop our efforts. The Gemara brought a dispute, whether it's about the heart stop beating or the, uh, uh, stop or the person stop breathing. And the Rav Papa makes the statement that everybody agrees that stop, stop, uh, a person who stop breathing is considered dead. We saw the ramification in previous days like Rav Chatam uh, Sofer, Rav Moshe Sofer said that um, that it may imply for a Kohen, a doctor who's a Kohen, whether he's allowed to be a Tamer for dead. And we saw that Rav Shav Israel make a direct uh, ramification uh, for uh, organ uh, donation. And the situation where we, we, we are definite that the brain is dead and we maintain the body uh, functioning allows us to take organs and transplant them to other people to save their lives. Okay. But 
not everybody agreed. And I'll, I'll refer to one of the Gedolim who, dis, di, who did not agree. And I'm referring to Rav Eliezer Voldenberg. He's known to be as the Tzitz Eliezer. Again, very, very recently, he, he was actually a colleague of Rav Shaul Israeli that we mentioned before. And he quotes the Chacham Tzvi uh, that in his tshuva uh, understood the Gemara in a different way and maybe we'll dedicate a couple of minutes to understand how they understood the Gemara uh, in, in a different way. But he says, no, hakol talui balev. You see what the, the uh, underlying the sentence? Hakol talui balev. We need to uh, ensure the uh, death of the uh, uh, heart and not just stop the end of breathing. And he, and he said, and he argues, Ela shelifamim afshan shama adayim toch alev, en adfika nikeret beligo. Ratzanon amar mibachutz al achazeh. He says, how does he understand the Gemara in Masechet Yoma? He says, we, the Gemara there was not about um, defining uh, what organ needs to die in order to define death. The Gemara there, the way he under, understand that, understands that is that the Gemara is there is to, uh, the dispute and the whole discussion is what organ will give us the best, the best um, um, sign the best uh, 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 way to identify the situation. In other words, it's not about defining the death itself. It's about uh, being able to provide us with information whether uh, it's, it's a bit different. In other words, according to the Chacham Tzvi, and Rabbi Lezer Wolderberg obviously follows, follows him, he says, no doubt that it's the death of the heart. And the old discussion in the Gemara, what organ uh, is a better indication for us for the death of the heart? In other words, just looking on, on the beats of a person, according to the opinion of the Gemara, does not give, give a good, a good, a, a, a good indication. Sometimes better indication or, or a more clear indication would be breathing. Apparently, they obviously see certain connection between the way the heart beats, okay, and the way uh, the uh, the uh, it's been also uh, um, uh, implemented and can be viewed, can be identified by the the breathing. We know that from scientific uh, um, perspective, that's totally not true. As I said before. Breathing, it has to do with the, with the function of the, of the brain, while uh, um, beating, the heartbeat, is a matter of uh, the, the, the uh, you know, how, how strong the, uh, the muscle of, the, 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 uh, of the, the heart itself, okay? Where are we? Okay, that's all. Let's keep moving. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, we need to be uh, we need to be honest and say that the understanding of the Chacham Tzvi and the Tzitzel uh, Yezer is based on Rashi in that discussion. If you look at the very last line of Rashi on the Gemara, there it says. The zinin the enchayut nikar belibo v'nikar bechotmo. In other words, it's clear from Rashi that it's not about what defines the actual death; it's what organs gives us the uh, the uh, the, in, the best indication of the death. And the, and there is a way to understand this Rashi that it's not necessarily the uh, the brain that that uh, dies. Uh, it's, it could be also the heart, um, but as I, as I said, the pshat is 
and, the, and obviously all other Rishonim, and definitely the, the Poiskin, as we saw in the Chatan Sofer, were very, very clear. It's not about the heart, it's about breathing. Uh, we, and, but uh, I had to also mention Atzit uh, 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 and the Chacham Tzvi, who hold different ways. Okay, as uh, science uh, made progress, uh, many countries, and many um, societies were debating uh, on the, uh, obviously not on the halachic level of this, but obviously on the uh, ethical level of uh, organ uh, donations. It involved very significant questions. And when it comes to uh, the land of Israel, uh, to the state of Israel actually, the question came up even strongly as we, uh, follow uh, our Jewish tradition, and the halacha has a lot, inf a lot of influence and involvement in, uh, in Jewish life, in Jewish, in the, in, our, in our lives in the, in the country. And the question came up, and the uh, chief, the first two, two chief rabbis of Avram Shapira, Abod Chayyahu, to deal with the question, that were these two. And they gathered the uh, Rab the uh, Rabbanut Council, and what you see here, and I won't read all of it, but just the very beginning. Moetzet Rabbanut Arashit, Pishivata Yom Aleph de Rosh Chodesh Marcheshvan, 1987, Ishra Perechad et Amlatzot Vadat Ashtalot. In other words, a, a specific committee headed by uh, Rav Stein, Rav Professor Steinberg. And, um, and uh, also Vigal uh, Shafar was involved there, and some others made the whole uh, 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 discussion and, and research on, on, on the situation. And uh, they submitted their, their recommendations to the uh, to the Moetzet uh, Rabbanut Arashit, and everybody accepted it with the following guidelines. And they start to, um, to uh, go through the process, it's not a long decision, but in the end, okay, they say the following. First of all, the success of, it was mainly heart, uh, uh, heart uh, uh, surgeries, but uh, they, uh, in, in Alacha, once a person lives over a year, it's considered chaye olam. So therefore, when you see in, 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 in the first, uh, 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 in other words, the, the science managed, uh, succeeded in, in those kind of surgeries to the point of, of 80%, over 80% uh, lived over a year, and uh, even 70 years lived over five years, and that's considered to be something valid, and uh, which means that a person is allowed to uh, go into such a surgery in order to save his life, because we need to know that when, uh, when we do this uh, heart, uh, trans, uh, uh, heart uh, donation, uh, we remove from, uh, from, from a person his heart, and uh, is it allowed to do that? And, then, and since the goal is to uh, stay further long, it's, it's allowed. Okay. And um, therefore, after all, okay, the um, Ora Amur see see on on under seven on point seven. The Ora Amur Rabbanut Arashit Israel Muchana leatir Ashtalat Lev the Merkaz Refui Adasa Virushalayim but Naim Abayim Kiyum Kol At Naim Likviat Motor Shel Taru Atorem. In other words, they defined before what measurements need to be taken and to be checked in order to define. Uh, the, the death. By the way, we don't, I mean, we have much more for the progressive tests in these days from the day from the 1987, obviously. And rule number two is Shituf Netzug Yerabanut Arashin. And I want to discuss that for a second. You see, rule number two that they said is a representative of the chief cabinet has to be a member of the uh, committee. Okay, apparently, you need to know that when we want to define uh, once uh, brain death, uh, after all the tests that we take, there is a committee, that's what it's called, the Ba'ada, 
made of two uh, authorized, special authorized doctors that uh, are uh, uh, that the state has authorized them, and obviously uh, after training to sign on uh, and define one's brain death. And the con the the concept uh, the the rule here of the rabbi Ruth here saying that a rabbi representative of the rabbinate has to be part of this committee. Okay, part of this committee has to be the 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 rabbi. Um, and this line, uh, remember it because we'll discuss it later on is a significant one. In other words, <laughs> depends on how you read it, right? But um, we'll get to that later on. We'll get to, the, to, to, the, to this later on. So rule number one, the person is defined as dead according to medicine. Two, a representative of this chief abend was involved in the committee. Three, in a ten merosh askama bichtav, in other words, there needs to be agreement of the family, either the person himself or the family. Um, I just, just for you to keep in mind that in, in the, the very few countries have a different rule. They state that unless someone signed that he disagrees to donate his organs, all people in the country uh, are under the uh, the uh, the uh, rule that they are, will, if they are eligible, obviously their organs will be donated. In Israel, it's the other way around, and in most in most countries, a person or a family has to to make to to decide on this and and sign. Um, and, and there are four and four four and five uh, bulletins, and but these are the five um, criteria, the five uh, the five. Uh, um, uh, requirements that the rabbinate had in order to support halachically the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the move. Now we need to know that it's not just Rav uh, Mordechai Eliyahu and Rav Rav Ram Shapira. Uh, later on, uh, it's all all chief rabbis. All, uh, all uh, 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 rabbinate councils, a year after year, we approve the psak that it's allowed to uh, to use brain death in order to uh, donate organs. One of the uh, important people to sign on this, and it's important for you to see that. I don't know if you can read it, what he says, but Shlomo Amma, when he was the chief rabbi. He wrote that Torah, he wrote Sak, we are proving what Rav Mordechai and Rav uh, uh, Shapira said. But what's most important, I don't know if you can see that on the very, very bottom of the page, there is the uh, signature of Rav Ovadia Yosef. And that's very important because Rav Ovadia Yosef influences not only uh, let's uh, let's say uh, religious communities, but also more traditional communities, and uh, even some, to the extent Haredi Sfardi. I have to say that Rav Ovadia Yosef's son, who is currently you, uh, serves as the chief rabbi, Rav Yitzhak Yosef, though he did not pull out um, the rabbinate. A, a not just agreement in, but supporting uh, organ donations. But on one on one, when he is being asked what to do, he said, "Well, we don't know what to do. It's true. It's true that my father supported it, but others do not support it." And he's leaning leaning towards the Haredi, uh, uh, um, not even Haredi. We should say. The Litai Haredi, the Litai Haredi segment in the, in the population that holds by Rav Waldenberg and Rav Yoshiv, which I which I've heard before, to not allow it. So the current Rav Yosef is kind of on the fence. He's not he's not sure. 
by the way, Rav Shlomo Amar personally involves in many, many cases and supports that and uh, he's, a great, uh, he's a great asset for, the, uh, for this need. Obviously, as I said before, Rabbi Eliyashiv, just like Rav Voldenberg, was opposing that. Um, okay. Now here's the tail in a ship. I don't know if you heard of this case, because on those days that uh, Rav Steinberg and Rav Yigal Shofran, which in the, in the cabinet, uh, were trying to get as many poiskim to support uh, the psak. On those days, Rav Oyerbach was alive. And he, to his opinion, we had a significant, had a significant uh, uh, weight. And in the beginning, he was, uh, he was leaning towards Rabbi Yoshi. And he said, well, well, by the way, they were, they were related. So he was leaning towards, I said, I don't know what to decide, though he was very heavily involved in, in, uh, um, in making uh, halachic uh, uh, statements regarding uh, uh, medical situations. When it came to the, to using uh, brain death as, as uh, as uh, definite death, he was he wasn't sure. So, in order to convince him, uh, Rav Igal Shafran and Rav Steinberg and, and others approached him and said, "Do you think that someone who is uh, uh, or uh, someone who is who, who is who is beheaded is a live person?" And he said, no, no doubt that someone who, who doesn't have a head is dead. He said, and what if we can prove to you that uh, an animal that is beheaded can live for a very long time? And not only live for a long time, but also can give birth. And he said, well, that will be something. And they found a way to behead a pregnant a sheep on January 1992 and to give birth to this body. And they brought the, uh, the results of the, of the, uh, of the uh, test, obviously, and Rav Oyerbach was, was amazed. And it didn't make him uh, support the, uh, the Rabbinic decision. It made him pull his uh, hands out of the, the, the dispute. In other words, he said, I don't know what to say. I'm not leaning, I'm, my heart <laughs> leaning towards the heart uh, beating, stop, uh, stop beating uh, opinion. However, my brain, <laughs> is leaning towards the uh, brain death uh, definition, and I'm not willing to decide. And we, left, we have been left with Rav Oyerbach not knowing what, well, what is uh, his final decision. So the whole process started with, I'm talking about the 90s, with M.K. Otniel Schneller. M.K., back then he was M.K., member, a Knesset member, and um, he wanted, and he understood the situation, and he, he, he was very, in, 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 in those, in the, in, on those days, um, the medicine world pushed to have uh, rules of how to make the, uh, the uh, uh, or, uh, organ uh, 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 donation. And they wanted to bring a law. And he insisted, that we should have this Israel, is the, the sovereign state of Israel has to make this uh, uh, law to pass the bill, uh, uh, to pass such a law only hand by hand with the chief cabinet. Uh, otherwise, he said, we'll lose, we'll lose in the future. And he definitely saw uh, uh, further to the, to the future. And, and he pushed the, uh, the uh, chief cabinet to make the decisions that we saw before. And then as an MK, he brought to the Knesset the law of Hashtalat Evarit. And it's, if you read the law, it's 
one one following the instructions of the chief rabbi, one on one. And that's what actually happened. 2008, the final uh, law passed and uh, was accepted, and everybody was happy. Well, everybody was happy, not necessarily. And um, two things happened. Two things happened. One, the first thing ha uh, that happened was that the chief rabbinate itself, the chief rabbinate itself wasn't sure about uh, keep supporting this law and, uh, or, or not. Even though the law was made spe specifically under their instructions, they were not sure whether uh, to support that or not. They were on the fence. And why? And I, I guess I won't surprise you if I'll tell you that it's a matter of ego. In other words, in the end, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the decision, even though that on the paper, everything was perfect, exactly what the rabbinate has required, there was a significant amount or, or significant lack of trust between the rabbinate and hospitals and doctors. And I have to be honest, it's both sides fault. Doctors fought back to not allow the, the rabbinic representatives to be on the committee in the hospitals when they define brain. They said it's a pure halachic, a pure scientific procedure, and you are not there uh, to uh, supervise what we do. And the rabbinic lacked the trust in the, uh, the, in the medicine uh, in, in, in doctors and they say, we are suspicious that you are too eager to uh, define death in order to be, to run on those special surgeries. And we are not, we do not trust you that you will follow halacha instructions and you will cut corners. And there was a huge amount of, of uh, a lack of trust between the bodies. In other words, <laughs> even that, such a great progress was made, yet nothing actually happened. Nothing actually happened. Um, skipping a few years later on, uh, by Professor Avram Steinberg, who was heading the committee that the chief cabinet made, who is both a doctor and a, he's both a professor and a, and a uh, rabbi, felt a lot of frustration. So here's what he did. He took 500 cases. And you need to know that 500 cases, when you have only 180 cases a year, where you define brain death, meaning that it's over four years of ongoing tests that he made. And he took report after report, okay, signed by those two doctors that are part of the committee checked all the, uh, the uh, tests, the physical tests that is required prior to this committee. And he went through all those reports, took a lot of time, and, he, and he, he, get, he got back to the chief rabbis, and he told them, listen, I must say that there was no one single case that the doctors failed and did not follow the rules that are following the rule that follows the, the halachic guidelines. In other words, he says 500 cases are good reason to remove the lack of trust and start a new era. And that's what happened. The chief cabinet pulled the requirement of physical uh, presence of the, of the rabbinic uh, representative in the committees and basically gave uh, permission to, uh, to the hospitals to uh, run the, uh, the operation on their own. I, I must also say that it's not just the lack of the rabbinate trust that was removed, but also the willingness of uh, doctors 
uh, and the fought in fighting back that uh, that the doctors had towards the the rabbinate also was removed and I personally am involved in many committees when families are being explained wh where they're heading to and they've been asked, do you want the rabbinate represented uh, to be involved? And when the family says, yes, I'm being called up and I've been to uh, several cases of, of, the, of, of those committees, many times just knowing that the rabbinate is involved is, is, uh, is enough. But that's one game. In other words, uh, I, I said in the beginning that I'll give, I'll give you some reasons to be happy. So that's one reason to be happy. In other words, the rabbinate and the, and the uh, me medical uh, operation um, made peace, okay? But that's not the case. I think what we're facing at the moment is something more, even more radical, even more problematic. And let me share with you the following picture. Do you know Avi Cohen? He was a very famous uh, uh, football or soccer. So I say it depends if you're from England or 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 the States. Uh, player uh, Avi Cohen, uh, and he passed away in a very, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an accident. Okay, never mind, never mind the, the situation. And um, though he was completely irreligious. Um, some of the family members were connected to Rabbanim, and obviously Haredi Rabbanim. And they fought back to not allow, even though the family was interested, and Avi Cohen himself was signed on uh, an agreement, what is called the Adi card. I'll, I'll talk to you about it in, in a second. Yet the family decided to fight back and, and, and to not uh, donate his organ. And that was an earthquake, earthquake in, 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 in Israel. Because the first time ever that someone who signed and we nobody was interested, as a result of the Banim push, he was not, uh, his organs were not donated. Okay? Um, and that's what we call the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the point where things have, have have started to change. Because if in, uh, when it comes to institutions, the rabbinate, the Knesset, the health uh, de uh, department, hospitals, in terms of institutions, okay. No doubt that the mainstream of, of the halacha, as we saw, beginning from the Gemara, through the Rishonim and the uh, Shulchan Aruch and the Chatam Sofer and the uh, Rav Shal Yisraeli and the Chief Rabbi, though the, 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 the institutions, let's say institutions are uh, coping the rabbinate, the rabbinate uh, uh, decision, the halacha guideline, when now the debate is what would the, uh, I would say, the shetach, okay, would react to. And the, the, the first person is, is Avi Cohen. Avi Cohen cases opened a very uh, uh, wide uh, resistance to uh, a donor, uh, to our organ donation. And we are in significant problem. First of all, let's talk about Adi card. Adi card, you see, went through different uh, stages. At this point, every person who, who, is, who is interested in halachic escorting and uh, guidance and consulting and involvement is eligible to receive that. Okay? But the, the, the main problem is Google. Google, as, as always, is the problem. Why Google, Google is the problem? Because when you make a search, and I made this search for you, you see, Ha'im mutar litrom evarim. See what you get on the, the first three results. One result is yeshiva, okay? Atar yeshiva. Second result is hidabut. 
Third result is Kippa. While well, you can may focus on the first on the first and the third, okay, it's very clear. The first and the third are in favor of, of doing that. The second is opposing that. If you look into Hidavrut website, they have a lot of influence on traditional uh, populations and segments. They hold of not holding. In other words, do not take this action. Do not take this action, as we don't want to uh, make a, a, a lachik decision, and uh, and uh, and do not donate. And this is the the uh, the, uh, the 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 exactly the uh, the place where we are. Would populations? How many people in Israel would keep donating or or will donate? Yes or no? That this has to do, it's 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 not halachic discussion anymore. The halacha is known. We know that it's what I call the mainstream. We know the institutions, and we know uh, we know halacha, and we know there is an opinion opposing that. The fight, the battle, should I say, right now, is what would the public decide? And when it comes to chiloni public, it's very clear. You donate organs. When it comes to uh, Haredi, very very problematic because Haredi uh, uh, who are being influenced by the uh, by the Litai segment, and as I said before, even Sfaradi Haredi, who could easily follow Rav Shlomo Amar and uh, and Rav Ovadia Yosef and Rav Mordechai Liao, yet they are in towards leaning. The uh, Rav Eliyashiv Psak. Baruch Hashem, when it comes to the religious Zionist community, it's very, it's very, uh, it's very uh, the situation is very good. Uh, we, we barely face any resistance uh, as a result of the uh, of the uh, of such a request, but we are in major problem. Why? And let me stop my sharing because. Um, I don't know if you know, but uh, in, de in moments of death, in, in moments that families experience death, they not only become shroom, they become ultra, ultra shroom. <laughs> People who never ever asked a rabbi any question before, they may go to the most extreme uh, people who, who, who on, on, on regular days they would speak against them and uh, do whatever they can in order to uh, to not give them any kind of influence. When it comes to the moment of death, they may interact with with such rabbis and they would give their own psukim and would end up not donating. Uh, and I have experienced that over and over and over uh, when. Uh, since the, uh, the, the the decision is that unless all um, relatives, let's say uh, I'm talking about first uh, first kirva, uh, uh, okay, like son, uh, children, brothers, whoever is in first connection to the to the person who died needs to sign that they are in agreement for for uh, a donor for uh, organ donation. And for them, okay, they may go to uh, to uh, to those rabbis, and they never uh, they will they will not donate, and we are in in struggle. Let me share with you a story, okay? Um, just like I, 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 let me share with you a story, okay? That was a success story, okay? In other words, what we are trying to do is to be able to escort and give guideline um, to families. And I have to say, when I speak to family, I don't ignore the opinion that does not allow. I say to family, listen, there are opinions. The mainstream is so. If you wish to be machmir, we'll accept that. But you need to know what the reality is. And not just to uh, uh, give only one side, OK? The, a uh, story that I'd like to share with you 
is, it has to do with, with uh, Eliezer Berland. I don't know if you know the name. Eliezer Berland is heading a very extreme group in uh, the Jewish quarter called Shuvubani. Belongs to Breslau. Uh, right now he's in, a, in, a, in court, Todalael, for, uh, for uh, um, taking enormous amounts of money, promising uh, basically things that he could, he, could ne he could never promise and, and using people's situations to literally make them poor. And, uh, you know, you hear that from media and you don't really trust that and say, yeah, probably there's another side. Someone is interested. I'm telling you something I've heard, I, I, I know from firsthand, okay? A family whose the entire family was in favor of uh, giving, uh, giving permission to uh, uh, donate organs. This, uh, the person who died had a little uh, team, a boy, okay? And he was 14 years old. And he was involved in his community in one of the classes, one of the, one of the Breslav guys gave. He wasn't the team, but, uh, but he was involved. So he called his, uh, his uh, madrich, his guide, his, the person who gave the, the class. And he said, no way, you don't do that. I'll connect you to Eliezer Berland and uh, he will come and do whatever is necessary and your father will get back to life and he's not dead even, he's just asleep. And um, like three in the morning, the boy is next to his father's bed. Eliezer Berland is stepping in and he's ma making this whole show how he is... Uh, Saving this, uh, bringing salvation to the soul of his uh, of his father, and speaks to the boy and he says to him, "Listen, the doctors will tell you to donate organs to uh, to uh, uh, disconnect your father from all the machines here. Don't let them do that. They don't like you." The, in other words, he's pulling the, the the little boy who is holding up to the hope that his father will still get back to him, and. He, he, he literally took from this boy 35,000 shekels. 30 in cash, okay? And this boy comes up, he uh, uh, turns back to the uh, 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 faculty, to, not, uh, to the staff in the, in, the, in the hospital, and the person who is involved, and he's yelling at her that his father is alive, and he was promised that he will get back by, by Shabbat back home. And so this... A uh, person in the hospital calls me up and says, what can we do? And I said, you know what? Forget about um, uh, organ donation. Let's save the boy. The boy is not willing to accept that the father is tragic in a tra tra tragic way he died. Let's help the guy. Let's help, let's help the boy. And I picked up the phone, spoke to Rav Shlomo Amar. He was in Panama at the time. And I explained to him the situation. And Rav Amar said, tell the boy to call me up. Tell the boy to call me up. And the boy calls up the Rav Rashi. He was very uh, happy that he's age, uh, eligible. And he said, I'll ask his bracha to make sure that my father is, is going, he will, will be alive. And he picks up the phone, speaks to the Rav Shlomo Amar for over 20 minutes. Rav Shlomo Amar beautifully make the boy understand that his father is dead to the point that he even was willing to, uh, to uh, donate uh, a, a, or his organ. What, what I'm trying to say is that we are dealing here in, it's, it's a very serious battle, okay, that we are dealing with. Um, I'm not talking about people who have a lachic statement. That's it's totally fine and I accept that it's, it's okay. What I'm against is things like Eliezer Berlin did, what I'm against is people, and I, 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 well, well, when I say against, I mean I'm not in favor of people who do not follow halacha, all of a, all of a sudden follow the most extreme opinion in, in, in halacha. And um, let me finish with that. Um, if we started with the question um, about uh, what does the halacha uh, opinion about uh, organ donations, we touched a very narrow but yet very significant uh, situation in which uh, after defining um, um, after defining uh, uh, brain death 
we, we are eligible to uh, take his organs and give it. Uh, you need to know that from one person, you can save up to six other people's lives. Six people can be lives. I'm not talking about improving life, improving a life, uh, but I'm just talking about actual lives that can be saved. Um, I normally tell families that um, we always pray and daven that we are sick for the days of Chiyat Amitim. And we can't even imagine how things like that happen. How could it happen that a dead person will be alive? And I give them, we don't know that, we still don't know that we understand that, but we can see how a dead organ who is considered halachically dead can still be alive. And that's the organ donation. And, uh, and, and in, in a sense, from my perspective, the way I see that, it's a sense of triyat ametim. Mamish, we can see that in our very eyes, and the value of it, and the mitzvah that one, one performs, there's uh, so much to do. So if I'll end up with a call to action before I take uh, questions, uh, I would say that if you didn't sign Adi, uh, Adi uh, a card so far, or if you didn't tell your kids, your family, that you signed it, and if you did not encourage them until now to do that, I encourage you to do so. Go ahead, make um, a big thing of, out of it, okay? Make a ceremony. I'm signing Adi, and I want you to know that if, if you feel like that, obviously, if you don't, if you follow uh, the, uh, the other opinion in, in Halakha and you don't feel like this, that's fine. But if you do feel like that, I think since we are, the battle right now is the social battle and not the Halakhic battle, we need to, whoever supports that, to go ahead and do something with it. And I once had a call, I don't know if you recall, there was a, um, another situation where, when uh, someone was uh, murdered next to Ariel, if you know the, the case a year and a half ago. And I, I received a phone call from a Haredi woman that asked, in, in, from a very Lita'i community, asked for my opinion and I said, listen, if you are Lita'i, you need to know that your, she said, even though I'm going to sign it, and she made a whole ceremony, let the entire community, the entire family to sign the, the Adi uh, card. And though she knew that in the end of the day, she might not be the uh, an, uh, uh, donor, but at least she made a, a statement that she supports people who want to do that. So questions do we have or... Is it possible to get a copy of the PowerPoint presentation? I'll send it to uh, through Tor Mitzio. Yes. Rabbo, I'll send a, a link and background information in English about a, a D for further reading. I will do that as well. Yes, sure. All right, we'll see you later. Uh, so, so thank you to Rav Boaz and uh, Tea Time on, on the house. Uh, so uh, stretch your legs and uh, we'll see you again in 15 minutes uh, with Rabbi Taylor. God bless you all.